Welcome to the Grand Hill Chronicles podcast. I am Don Bishop, and I write as T.S. Pedramon. Today, I'm going to have a conversation with author Jessica Flory about clean fantasy, which uh, I was excited to find her profile on, on Instagram and uh, message her and get to know a little bit. Like, there, She has found that there is a following for fantasy that is specifically clean now that's not the only thing about it like there, uh, well listen to the interview but before we get to that um i have started doing public appearances i told you last week that i would do this and i did uh yesterday i went to a library uh to do a signing event and it was exciting i was nervous and it went well today i went to another one it was slow even though there were more people, fewer people, um, proportionally, fewer people came and talked to me. And that's fine. That's just a different crowd. And tomorrow I'm going to another, actually two libraries. So last week I said I would tell you where I'm going to be this coming week. Uh, so I'm going to do that now before we get into the interview. Um, so tomorrow, I told you this part last week, but tomorrow I'll be at the uh, and this is all within the Central Rappahannock Regional Library System. Uh, I hope to do other library systems soon, uh, but this is where I'm starting out. And tomorrow I will be at the Newton Branch in Hag, Virginia. And that's on Coles Point Road uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also tomorrow, actually, I should be saying today. So if you're listening to the podcast on the release date on March 28th, then this is today. Um, so I hope you're listening in the morning, and I hope you just happen to be close to these places. Otherwise, <laughs> there's no way you're going to catch me. Um, in the afternoon, from 3 to 6 p.m., I will be at the Montrose branch in Montrose, Virginia, and that's on Polk Street. Um Again, from 3 to 6 p.m. 3 to 6 p.m. Next week, on April 2nd, I will be at the Snow Branch in Spotsylvania. And that's on Courthouse Road. So just go to the library in Spotsylvania, and you'll find me from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I'll be set up with a table there, and it'll be like the, the pictures that you can see on my Instagram profile. Uh, and that's... Uh, at Grand Hill Chronicles is my profile on Instagram. And finally, because I'm not going to go beyond next week, um, finally on Wednesday, April 3rd, I will be at the Porter Branch on Parkway Boulevard in Stafford from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. And yeah, it was fun. And I look forward to these, and I'm, I'm going to keep doing them. Um, yesterday, somebody told me that her... Her niece or some, I don't know, some, some relation just recently opened a bookstore uh, about an hour north of me. So I'm going to be uh, sending her an email. I just remembered I need to do that. But um, yeah, I'll be trying to get into more libraries and bookstores uh, to get the word out and meet cool and interesting people. So yeah, um, other than that, I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into today's episode. So, um, and next week we'll have an interview with author, uh, Herman P. Hunter about, uh, how he preps for, uh, a, a, an event, you know, what, what he brings to an event to make it su successful. Um, and we go off topic, <laughs> but we have a, a really interesting conversation that I'm going to split into two episodes in editing, but, um, just because we, we talked so much about different things. Um, yeah, without further ado, here's the interview. I am here with author Jessica Flory. Uh, did I pronounce that mm -hmm. correctly? It, it doesn't look like a difficult name. Yeah, yeah, you got it right. Okay. Um, and well, let's let's let our listeners get to know you a little bit. So you write fantasy, and I I myself know very little about you. I happened across you on Instagram and and uh, saw that you're writing in the same niche as I am. So thought it'd be good to have you on. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. 
Yeah, you're right. I write young adult fantasy with a good amount of romance in there. And it's always, my books will always be clean. That's a big thing for me. That's really important to me. Um, I like to read and write clean books. So no explicit scenes, no swearing, just, you know, fantasy made up swear words. So that's always fun. But yeah, that's what I like to write. Um, I live in Missouri with my husband and four kiddos. We've got three boys and a girl, and they are four, six, eight, and ten. So we are not busy at all. Life is super peaceful, and it's great. Yeah, <laughs> not busy at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we have kids of similar ages. Oh, uh, we fun. have a 12-year-old, a 7-year-old, and a 4-year-old. Oh, that's great. How fun. Yeah, they're, they're fun ages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for our, our listeners, yeah, that's our, our topic is, is clean fantasy. And we'll, we'll dig into, um, into that. And before anybody, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you, you like the, uh, occasional raunchy book, but, um, you know, hear, hear us out and, and have listened as to why we, we have chosen to write the way we do. And, um, yeah. So Jessica, what's, what's your, um, just to get to know you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. What's your schooling background or, or professional um, previous to writing? Or I, I don't know. How did, you, how did you get into writing? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, well, I've loved to write since I was a kid. Since I was really young, I always wanted to be an author. It's been a dream of mine to have a book published. And yeah, having that dream realized is just, uh, can't even describe it. It's been such an amazing experience. My first book came out last year, so I'm relatively new to writing. I've got another book coming out tomorrow um, and one later this year. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, as far as like <clears throat> professional life and schooling goes, I, uh, in college, I studied molecular biology, so nothing to do with writing. <laughs> but I did take the occasional writing class um, to kind of give my brain a break and because it was something I really loved. So I've kept learning and kept studying it. And actually, my biology background um, has been surprisingly helpful when I'm designing worlds and magic systems and things. It's kind of nice to have that scientific background because I really like to play with science and and physics mm -hmm. in my world and kind of change things and just see what's going to happen. So that's been fun. Um, and I did use my biology degree for a little while. I was a cancer research assistant and it was awesome. I loved it. Um, and then we started having kids and I really wanted to stay home and be with them. So I've started, I started writing a little bit more whenever I could during nap time and uh, whenever I got, you know, 15 minutes to myself, just writing a little bit more. So that's kind of how we got to where we're at today, just writing a little bit every day and kept on trying and trying and trying. And my first novel was not published. Neither was my second, neither was my third. <laughs> but I kept getting better and I stuck with it. And then the fourth novel I wrote was my first book that was published. So yeah, dream come true. Do you have any plans to do you have any plans to go back and uh, take those first uh, three books and, and rework them into something you want to publish? Or are those just learning experiences? Definitely learning experiences. <laughs> I see now okay. why um, they weren't good enough. I might pull like ideas from them that I liked, but um, yeah, the books themselves um, were not ready to be published. And I couldn't see it at the time, but now I've learned enough that I can see why they, why they didn't get picked up. So, yeah. So did you, um, are you traditionally published or did you self-publish? So a little bit of both. So my first novel was traditionally published by a small house called Immortal Works and it was a fantastic experience. They're publishing the sequel this fall. Um, yeah, just a wonderful experience publishing with them. They've been so great and it was really nice to have that kind of someone to hold my hand and show me the ropes because I really like I know how to write a book, but I know nothing about <laughs> publishing or marketing a book at the time. So it was great to have them there. And yeah, I mean, that moment when I opened the email from them saying that they wanted to acquire Oceans of Sand, which is my first book, I just screamed. I freaked out. It was the, the best moment ever. So that was 100% worth it. 
um, with my book coming out tomorrow, which I'm not sure when this is going to air, but it's definitely out by now. Um, it's called The God Heist. It's set in the Oceans of Sand world. And I really wanted to be able to give that one away to newsletter subscribers. So if you get on my mailing list at jessicaflory.com, you're going to automatically get that book. It's a novella. And it's a lot of fun. It's uh, a great introduction to my writing style and uh, the world that Oceans of Sand is in. So I really wanted to be able to give that one away as kind of um, a reward or an enticement to signing up for my mailing list. So I knew I had to self-publish that one because I wouldn't be able to give it away if it was traditionally published. So I kind of had to, mm -hmm. you know, take a step into the unknown and learn a whole lot about self-publishing because there is a lot to learn. But it's been great and such a rewarding experience. And now to finally see that book that I've put my heart and soul into and put so much work into coming into the world. Just oh, can't even describe what an amazing feeling it is. So really excited about yeah. that one. Both routes, traditional and self-publishing have just been unbelievably amazing experiences. So. Well, good. Yeah. Wow. So many things. Um, you mentioned that you like to consider uh, the kind of the scientific implications or effects in world building mm -hmm. and so do I. Uh, and, and sometimes it's hard to, to know when to just take a step back and, and wave, do the hand wavy. I'm like, this thing is this way in this world because it is. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, um, yeah, I, I write it. I, I write it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we're writers. We're writers here. I'm, this is why we have yeah. editors. <laughs> Now, I, I consider myself to be good with spelling and grammar, but That's you cool. actually don't have to be good with spelling or grammar to produce a good work. Absolutely. Um, yeah. a, a fiction. Like, it's it's all about the story structure and 100%. the character development. And yeah. an editor can clean it up. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I, I write it. <laughs> <laughs> I started writing. I started writing my the Grand Hill Chronicles, um, although I didn't have a name for it yet in 2010 um okay. and in 2014 ish i i self-invented the the concept of a web novel wow. uh, if it existed anywhere else i was unaware of it um but i was like you know i want to share this with people so i i also want to make myself keep writing it so i'll like post a mm. chapter a week you know that was that was the idea and i didn't get very far with it because i was pretty busy mm. um but uh, with that, with that book, which is not done yet, I've set it aside. Okay. Um, because I care a lot about it, and I need to get things right for myself. Yeah. I need to get yeah. things. You want to do it right within the right aesthetic. Yep, makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so in in two thousand seventeen, eighteen. Anyway, some somewhere in between there. Mm -hmm. I, um, this, the, the Grand Hill Chronicles occurs across worlds oh. and I, I wanted to be nerdy and, and like keep careful track of, of when things are happening on different worlds. Uh, and so you have like different time zones on different worlds wow. and they're on different seasons oh and each world's year lasts a different amount of time and each world's day is a different length. Wow. And so I, I created a, a an Excel spreadsheet to to deal with that and like i i i was calculating it um as a number of seconds after yeah. some initial point in time before the story began and everything was going to be calculated as that many seconds and then the i could look at the excel sheet to see like this happened here and it was noon wow. but this happened on at the same time in this other world what time of day was it what season was it and so like that is nerding out like that, I didn't get very far with that either. I was too busy. I, I want to, I will after Nightshade Unicorn. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so that, that's, that's one side of things. And then the, the other side of things in 2020, I was doing some, some, I guess beyond world building, it was universe building um, wow. in this universe, in the Grand Hill Chronicles universe. Um, I did some sketching and, and had this 
wacky idea to have one of the worlds is a moon orbiting a Jupiter-like planet. Mm -hmm. And I tilted it on its side. And then I decided that the, the pole would stay pointing at the world that it's orbiting. But that that doesn't work. Okay. Physics doesn't work like that because it's got to rotate on its axis and mm -hmm. that rotation would keep it, um, it it'd have a gyroscopic effect, you know, and so that the pole would not mm -hmm. stay pointed in. And, right, right. and somebody yeah. online in some, some uh, Facebook group pointed that out, yeah. but did so in a manner where I felt attacked. Oh no, <laughs> uh, oh, that's too bad. And he was probably just trying to help me out. Like, you know, this doesn't make sense, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I'm like, uh, I thought this was a cool idea. And, and so I, I finally like, it's a fantasy universe. There's magic and, and, and yeah, aliens. So there. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a way cool idea. Come on. It's fantasy. It doesn't have to be perfectly true to life. But yeah, that sounds like a really cool idea. I like that a lot. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's not that kind of fantasy though. Like, um, Oh my goodness. Did you see, uh, What's the movie called? It might be called Upside Down. Uh, mm. Kirsten Dunst. And I don't remember the guy's name, but it's it's two. It's a sci-fi or, or a science fantasy romance. Oh. It's a romance oh. is what it is. Okay. Uh, but um, the setting is think. most people would say sci-fi, but I'm going to say science fantasy because <laughs> these two planets were rotating the same star and they just each one had its own brand of gravity oh and each planet and and everything on it adhered to that brand of gravity and they ignored each other oh my gosh oh so they're like hovering in space uh maybe half a kilometer apart no way and and the um the societies on each planet have have come together there's there's a single building that goes in what? between okay i need to see this yeah. yeah i have not seen that that sounds really cool yeah and like you could travel in that building to the other planet but if you uh just step out in the street you'll fall back home oh interesting so like the the, the two kinds of gravity no it doesn't yeah, like that doesn't, doesn't happen like sense. that <laughs> but it's a cool idea. it's like yeah Doctor Who is science fantasy. It's not science fiction. They they have so many things they just throw out there. There's an actual yeah, witchcraft episode with the 10th Doctor. Oh, that's um, funny. I've never seen Doctor Who. I need to watch it. Yeah. That's I would I would I stopped with the 11th Doctor. Okay. Um maybe well, no, maybe I got into the 12th Doctor a little bit. But it's good with the 9th and 10th for sure. Okay. Good to know. And then and then it's good for a lot of the 11th, but then yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, so clean fantasy. Yeah. Why? What, what, do, what do you think? Yeah. So that's a great question. I think there's a few answers to that for me personally. The main one being that I want my kids to be able to read my books and I don't want to have to worry about what's in them, you know, like, I'm a mm -hmm. mom, I'm a Christian, I have certain beliefs that I hold very dear. Um, and not saying that if you read, you know, smutty romance books, you're completely in the wrong and you should not do that because everybody's got different tastes and that's totally fine. But for me personally, um, this is what I want to read. This is what I want to write. It's what I want my kids reading. And so that's what I put out into the world. Um, and it's kind of surprising how many people feel the same way. Like I was nervous about marketing a clean fantasy book because a lot of what you see out there, especially big names in fantasy romance specifically are putting out, you know, kind of books with a lot of explicit content. And that's what's really popular, um, a lot these days. And so I was nervous about that, but yeah, I've been able to find a community of awesome readers who want clean romance books and clean fantasy romance books. There's a whole side of Instagram, which is where I'm mainly um, doing my social media things with the handle Jessica Flory author, if you're interested. 
Um, but yeah, there's a whole side of Bookstagram where people just want their books to stay clean and they don't want to see that on page romance scenes or the swear words. And so it's been really cool to find that community of like-minded people um, who have these pain points of they want to read great, you know, heart pumping romance and this awesome fantasy that just draws them into the world, but they don't want all the explicit content with it. So yeah, it's been, it's been really rewarding. Um, and you also do yeah. see authors like Brandon Sanderson. I mean, he's not really fantasy romance. There are romance elements in some of his books, but I mean, he's huge and he's putting out mostly clean books, like, like 95% <laughs> clean books, you know, yeah. which is awesome. Like, I love that. And he's one of the top fantasy writers of our day. So there's definitely a demand for it. People, people want it. So, yeah. 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 Well, and, um, sorry, I, I had this other thought. I'll, I'll, I'll read this quote, um, but I, I, I'll come back just because I, okay. I derailed myself mentally before I started talking. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. So, um, this is, this is, a from a general in the u.s army uh a few years ago and i'll i'll reveal that more particularly afterwards but um surely some some people well maybe not surely i don't have tons of re of listeners but um so this this general said the general is sorry to be informed that the foolish and wicked practice of profane cursing and swearing a vice hitherto little known in our american army is growing into fashion he hopes that the officers will, by example as well as influence, endeavor to check it and that both they and the men will reflect that we can little hope of the blessing of heaven on our army if we insult it by our impiety and folly. Added to this, it is added to this, it is a vice so mean and low without any temptation that every man of sense and character detests and despises it. Wow. That is from none other than George Washington. Wow, that's awesome. In August of 1776. Wow, what a cool quote. So, Love that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I would I would say like there's just really not any need. Well, for, I 100 agree. Like it's a fantasy world. Why would they have yeah. our curse words? Why? Like, well, it just doesn't make. Sense. I. I'll play devil's advocate, um, and I don't know if you've. If you've ever listened to the Writer Dojo podcast, mm, I have to, uh, have to look it up. But they, they're a curious pair. Um, but so, like you mentioned, Brandon Sanderson mm -hmm. and his stuff is is pretty clean. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say one hundred percent. He's he's freer with language than I would choose to be. Yeah. Uh, and there's been a there have been a couple of moments. Um, where it went a little closer to explicit than I would be as well. Um, but, uh, sorry, I forgot what I was, what I was saying. Um, there's, there's Brandon Sanderson. Uh, the oh, the dojo, the writer dojo. Yes. Um, so these guys are, are members of the same church I go to and Me too. they're, they're Christian, but they, they, um, Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about, Brandon. I thought you were talking about Brandon Sanderson. Sorry. I don't know these people. Sorry. No, same. I made a mistake. Same. Same. Oh, same, same. same. Oh, cool. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But these guys, um, they're, they're free with the, with the language. Okay. Um, Interesting. And they, yeah. they keep the podcast words pretty clean. Not, not absolutely, but, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, several years ago, I accidentally, I mean, not accidentally. I listened to an audiobook um, of of Larry Correa's, okay. and I would not have guessed that it was from a member of the church by by the language, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have like um, Jay Golden Kimball, who they they call the swearing apostle. Um, swearing apostle. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to come way back around to 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 there is no need for it but mm -hmm. meanwhile yeah. playing devil's advocate yeah continue um there's, so jay golden kimball was an apostle in the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and he was called the swearing apostle 
because sometimes that is too he funny. Used, <laughs> he used some uh, some words that were a little bit stronger than most most members of the church would. Um, Hilarious. And there's there's one story I remember, and I don't know if it's actually a true story, but he was giving some dignitaries a, a tour of Temple Square, and uh, you know he's like, you know, this is the 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 tabernacle here's the history behind it um we use it for this and then here's this assembly hall and the history behind it but like every building they visited there was this one guy from england who would say oh yeah you know we have something that that's grander and more impressive back wow. home yeah I, I see what you're saying but man back home it's it's much it's way awesome Jeez. and so then at one point of the tour this gentleman interrupts and says, and what's that building there? And he points at the Salt Lake Temple, which is an impressive geographical landmark. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a big, impressive building. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's a huge landmark in the church history. It took 40 years to build. Um, but as the story goes, J. Golden Kimball glanced at it and said, darned if I know, thing wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, That's awesome. <laughs> so, so um, back to the dojo. That's too funny. They had an episode of their podcast podcast about swearing. In, oh, wow. Interesting. In fiction. I, and, I and how it's used. Mm -hmm. And I agree that there is an aesthetic uh, rationale. Yes. If you want to convey a certain aesthetic, um, that is most effectively done with swearing, if not impossible without. Yes, I do. Um, I see. Yeah, I've heard that point before. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, uh, I heard a lot of buzz about the. Uh, oh, what's what's the current big buzzy fantasy series? Four, fourth Wing. Are you talking about Fourth Wing? Yeah, Fourth Wing. Yeah, I was just. I started hearing a lot of buzz about that. Mm -hmm. So I went on to. Amazon and I, I looked at the, the sample inside F word on the first page. Oh yeah. Oh, it's on a great page. Not for me. <laughs> yeah. Not, not what I'm looking for. Yeah. So yeah, you can, you can do that and it conveys right off. This is that kind of story or it's going to have that true, kind true. of stuff. Inside. Yeah. At least she, yeah, she put it on the front page so people would know like, okay, this is going to be there and, you know, put it down or keep going. But this is this is what it is. Yeah, I would. And say, um, oh yeah, sorry. Keep going. So now, where where I I think you're coming from and where I'm coming from, and this is this is my first book, and right right now I'm holding the oh, the first. It's gorgeous. The first physical copy. Oh my god! Of it. It's beautiful. I love it. It it arrived yesterday. Oh, um, congratulations! Oh my. And god. I'm thanks. I am currently suffering those those publishing lessons mm. um so i published on on february 28th okay um so this has been out for two weeks yesterday oh wow yeah and I knew. um in order to meet this deadline mm -hmm. that i had set for myself to mm -hmm. to publish on february 28th i published on amazon um ebook paperback and hardcover okay. without proof copies first. Oh, and okay. uh -huh. now I'm feeling the pain because really? so like this is mostly great. Like okay. I would proudly hand this except for some significant details. Oh, really? So my, my daughter, I mean, for one easily fixed, easily fixed um, is my daughter pointed out this in in the pronunciation guide this this character with that last name i don't give a last name for this character in the book oh, and funny. if he has a last name it's certainly not the same last name as the main character <gasps> oh! so, <laughs> that was just i was That's i funny. must have been tired when i typed that in and, oh man yeah so i need to i need to upload new um, manuscript files all around 
Well, that, that's, how you, take out that last that's name. how you learn. It definitely Doesn't could have been worse. At least your humor what? is like formatted correctly and <laughs> it looks beautiful. Well, yeah. Now the thing with the, with the cover, there is, there is one thing with the cover file is that I did it with uh, GIMP and GIMP doesn't speak CMYK. Oh man, I don't uh, know what you printers mean. <laughs> CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Okay. Uh, I think that's black, but um, GIMP, the, the GNU image manipulation program, okay. um, GIMP speaks RGB. R yeah, RGB. Um, and when you convert from RGB to CMYK, you might wind up with kind of washed out blacks. Oh, really? Oh, man. Um, and so I, I don't know if it's just because of the way Amazon prints it or if it's because of the conversion RGB to CMYK. Okay. But I, I think this does look a little washed out that the blacks aren't um aren't bright and dark enough hmm, interesting so i mean that's that's easily fixed now because i'm um, well not i mean yes easily but still tedious because i have learned to use uh another software called scribus okay um and so i i have generated a new file from from scratch again from the wow. the artwork that the artist gave me um the, the it was done by vivid covers by the way okay. um, and i think she did, oh, she did a great job she did a beautiful job. um yeah but she i only paid her for one um formatted cover okay and then she gave me the, the materials and i formatted other covers other other wow. versions of the cover you know smart including right. this one. Mm -hmm. And that's why this one is went through GIMP. Okay. And okay. That's, that's growing pains, but then the yeah. biggest growing pain, mm -hmm. it's like, I might leave it alone for that last name issue. Mm -hmm. And I might leave it alone for the, uh, for the kind of washed out black mm -hmm. on the cover. But look at that. What do you notice in the, in the book? It's a little blurry for me. I mean, from what I can see, it looks margins. good, but the margin, yeah, I see what you're saying. The margins are a little big. big. Yeah, just a little bit. That's, I feel like it would that's be because... too bad. Oh no, why? What I, I meant to publish at four and a half by seven inch trim. Okay. And I got the template for a four and a half by seven inch but then when I went and actually published, see, Amazon doesn't doesn't carry. That's not one of their trim sizes. You can do mm -hmm. a custom trim size, mm -hmm. but I forgot to do that when I oh, actually no. created it. Oh no! And so this is five point zero six by seven point eight one. Okay. Trim. It's a little bit bigger. Uh huh. But the inside still printed at the correct size. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Well, that's how you learn. And you know, there's a lot, there is a lot to learn with self publishing. And I can't change the trim size. I, I, uh, you can't change the trim size after you've published. So that's, then, that's the ouch. Cause I, I didn't do a proof copy before I published. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, you know, it's still a beautiful book that I would be super proud of, honestly. Well, thanks. And the, the, the ebook is still there. The, the hardcover is still there. Cause I used a common trim size for the hardcover six okay. by nine, okay. you know, this four and a quarter by seven isn't common. Mm -hmm. Um, even the 5.06 by seven, eight, one is also not really common, okay. but, um, yeah, I'm working on fixing that. I, I, um, I can change, I can change the formatting inside. But then I have to go and reformat it in Atticus mm. and that doesn't, that doesn't blow up the pages. I actually, I wonder if I should just do a print to PDF and, and blow it up that <laughs> blow up the pages like that. Yeah. Um, so that, so that you have everything, all the pages are formatted the same. They're just bigger. True. Yeah. yeah. That could work. That could work. Yeah. 
what I have done as of right now is I went back into Atticus and gave it the different trim size and re-exported and it gives it a different page count. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Which means a different spine thickness, which means a new uh, cover file. No. <laughs> um, oh, man. So anyway, back to clean fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough woes of, so that the book is available and um, you just can't buy the paperback right now. Give it a week and it'll be up. I mean, maybe three days, but definitely within a week. The paperback would be available again. Yeah, good luck. Um, but what I meant to say with with this, and I imagine with with yours, mm -hmm. so I don't have anything that we would consider bad words or swear words. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's nothing sexually explicit, um, but there 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 is danger. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's blood, um, not tons. Uh, and I've, I've kind of debated with myself as to how bloody I would get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, whereas like, so I, I, I did about 12 years active duty Marine Corps oh. and, uh, never deployed, but, uh, you, you get trained on things and you learn combat life saving. And so you, you attend classes, um, or, or training sessions where they talk about how to treat battlefield wounds and, and wow. keeping that Marine alive until they can get to uh, a proper hospital, mm -hmm. you know? I bet that's um, super useful as a writer. Wow, I would love to know that stuff. Yeah, it hasn't, I don't think I've really used that knowledge yet, but okay. mm -hmm. but um, you see things like, uh, oh, and, and like you, you learn how to kill. Uh, yeah. Go to the rifle range, go to the pistol range, and they show you where to shoot uh, to be more effective. Because um, oh. if you hit somebody on on the the shoulder, um, if they're in a battle, they're they've probably got plenty of adrenaline. They're still in the yeah. fight. Yeah, you know that, that's not taking them down. Yeah, good point. Um, so you 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 learn like how bullets tear through organs and like. Um, I guess I'm I'm getting a little uh, visceral or uh, <laughs> what's the word um, graphic? Yeah, yeah. I get yeah, a little bit graphic warning right now. Um, yeah, like if if you shoot somebody in in they 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 illustrate a T box on some on some targets, and you get it like yeah. inside this this T box, mm -hmm. it's gonna enter and hit the the medulla oblongata. Oh. Um, or however you pronounce that, not a doctor. And that's lights out. Like, Oh, wow. The dead before you hit the ground. Interesting. Um, whereas if you hit a major artery in an arm or a leg, um, now they talk about this in, in terms of like your buddy's been hit. How are you going to save his life? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you have to like stop the bleeding. Um, and like, if, if you see bright red spurting blood, that's an artery wound. Okay. And they need a tourniquet. Uh, okay. If you see smoothly flowing dark red blood, that's venal bleeding. And you can just, you can press that to suppress the bleeding. Um, wow. This is so interesting. But um, yeah, sorry. There's there's not that much blood in, in Nightshade Unicorn. There's there's a little bit. Um. And that's kind of necessary to the story um, in part because, and I can see, I can see proponents of swear words in fiction saying that they do this with their swear words, but you need to have some blood for it to be serious. Like if, if there is serious um, world threatening danger, there's going to have to be some, um, you have to show some of it. Yeah. Uh, it's like in Wheel of Time, Rand lost his hand. Yeah. You know, his, mm -hmm. his hand was blasted off. Yeah. And the, the character, the main character suffered something that, um, I mean, even in a lot of 
movies that that people take really seriously. Main characters are are plot armored, uh, protected that, that nothing happens directly to them mm -hmm. or to mm -hmm. those that are close to them. Yeah. Uh, but I uh, there's there's Lord of the Rings where Frodo lost a finger. He was rescued. Yeah. Uh, which we all wanted because that's a happy ending. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he doesn't get but that he back. Didn't. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, um, I would say that clean fantasy doesn't necessarily mean that there's no danger or it's not serious, exactly like you said, right? Like there's still hard things happening to the characters. There's still heavy themes that are dealt with sometimes, you know, it's still going to be an emotional roller coaster for the reader if it's done well. Um, and, you know, people define clean as, di you know, different ways, but mm -hmm. yeah, in my books anyway, um, I keep them clean by like the reader knows what's happening, but I don't get overly, descriptive with the violence, right? Like that's the beautiful thing about a book. You can imagine as much as you want to, or as much whatever you don't want to, right? You don't have to see it the way you are if you're watching a movie. So where a movie kind of, they can, they can either show you exactly what's happening or they can cut so you know what's happening, but you don't see it. You know, a book, you can, the author can be more descriptive or less descriptive and you can imagine it how you want to, right? So I keep my yeah. books on the somewhat less descriptive side of the violence anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, that brings up another another question where I, I see people doing um, trigger warnings or, or um, oh, darn it, I've forgotten that word again. Um, uh, gra graphic or gore, mm -hmm. graphic or yeah, graphic content warnings. Mm -hmm. And I am not really in favor for that for books. I appreciate it for movies. Um, but for books, like you, you, um, you do that through the marketing largely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I think the defining or the, the differentiating factor is that in a book, the reader is not passive. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, absolutely. You yeah. can skip a couple of pages if you need to, you know, like you're, you're in charge of your experience even more than you are when you're watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do I see think... why people do that though, because some people are really triggered by violence or, you know, if there's suicide in your book, some people really might not want to read that. So I see why that's becoming mm -hmm. more of a thing to have those trigger warnings yeah, I have mixed feelings about it. I think they are really helpful to some people. They're also like a tiny bit of a spoiler, maybe sometimes. It's like you pick up a book uh -huh. and you see trigger warnings about suicide or abuse. And you're like, okay, well, now I know there's going to be suicide and abuse. And the whole time you're reading that, you're like, okay, when is this going to happen? You know, so there's, it just, it changes, oops, sorry. It changes your experience a little bit. I still think it can be a really good thing. Um especially if some books are very leaning very heavily towards those triggers and they're, you know, frequently popping up in the book, I would say you probably definitely want to have a warning for readers who are sensitive about that topic. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I see where that's where you're coming from, mm -hmm. but then you also don't want to have spoilers. Um, and if I were to write something, and I very well might, uh, that, that kind of tackles depression, mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't want to do a spoiler. Like, I, I think yeah. that um, I think that people who have gone through it will recognize the signs. Yeah. And, and I would... I would present it because uh, this is who I am. I would present it in such a manner that we see the other side or, or I'm communicating my view of that issue mm -hmm. through the character's eyes yeah. and perceptions yeah. and, and decisions. Yeah. Um, and so like somebody who has been through that, 
would recognize this and hopefully be led through it to the other side. Yeah, and, absolutely. And that could be a positive experience. Yeah. And somebody feel, who feel hasn't like been someone through understands. That, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And somebody who hasn't been through it might um, might wonder why the character is thinking this way. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, maybe it can be education. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, well, and if you have those trigger warnings, say there's a trigger warning, there's depression in this book, you might, you know, someone who has depression, they might put it down. They're like, oh, I don't want to read about that. Whereas if they just pick the book up and then they really see themselves in your character and they feel validated and seen and heard, like that could be a really therapeutic, rewarding experience, you know, that they would have otherwise missed out on. And I think that's really the power of stories, right? Is to help people feel recognized and that they are not alone in their experiences. So I think that's a really mm -hmm. powerful thing. And that makes me think of Wheel of Time. Um, I love when, because Rand has a moment where he kind of is able to turn around and, and shed a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. I, I love Wheel of Time for on so many levels. It's just such a brilliant series. Yeah, so relatable. Rand is a fantastic character. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think they did trigger warnings when that was coming out. I, I could be wrong. But yeah, there would be trigger warnings all over that book that might alienate some people who otherwise would love it. Not to keep bashing on trigger warnings. Like I said before, I think they can be really, really good. But there are definitely pros and cons. Yeah. And I'm um, now back to because you mentioned you mentioned the 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 fantasy world made up swear words. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have um, mixed feelings about that. I, I definitely appreciate that they're not using the real world swear words, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, it's still like, um, what's the word? Oh my goodness. Uh, for an author, I'm not having a good time with words. Um, <laughs> it happens. It's, it's continuing the permanence of, of um, having swear words rather than just saying what you mean, and right. I'm I'm probably too much of a literalist, um, not not just with words, but um, yeah, I don't I don't I don't know where I'm going. It's it's um, no, yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's it's like the 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 Mormon swear words where if you say <laughs> yeah. fudge people know what yeah. you mean. What are you really trying to say? Yeah. No, sometimes fantasy swear words can become a crutch, right? They, they can be a really good thing. And also they can be overused because sometimes you just want a character who swears a lot, but you don't want to offend people. So fantasy swear words are awesome. But when all of on the other hand, yeah, exactly. If all of your characters yeah. are swearing all the time, how realistic is that? Right. And maybe, you know, that could be an intentional choice that's, that could be just part of your world. Maybe that's just part of their culture, but it can, yeah, it can make your characters seem all one note. And then your fantasy swear words are lacking in their purpose. Like, why are they even there? And that can, that can happen with real swear words too. Like to go back to fourth wing, I did read some of it and all the characters said all the swear words, like, I thought she did some really interesting things in that book. And so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to bash on her and she's obviously very, very successful. But one thing I think she could have done better was just differentiating her characters and the amount of swearing that they were each comfortable with. It felt like all of the characters just swore like sailors, right? Like it was just, yeah, all over the place. And so I felt like she was missing an opportunity with her characterization there. Um, and the same thing can happen with fantasy swear words. The other thing with fantasy swear words is that I, you mentioned this before that swearing can, you know, it really packs uh, an emotional punch sometimes when used at the right moment. And sometimes because fantasy swear words aren't our swear words, they can be kind of lacking in that 
in that emotion, right? Um, mm -hmm. And with me, I still choose to not use real swear words for the reasons I mentioned before, but I do see why some authors choose to use real swear words just to get that kind of that that emotional punch that can that can come there. And you know, Brandon Sanderson, yeah. he's a mostly clean author, but his characters do use real swear words on occasion, probably for that reason. So yeah, lots of different things yeah. to consider when you're choosing what to read and what to write and what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And it swearing is an interesting concept. Uh, like it's it's not the same in every language and in every culture. Yeah. Um, like apparently in, in Europe, there it's a lot less taboo over there. Oh, interesting. Um, and I saw a week or two ago, I saw a video somebody saying in, in Japanese that they don't really have words that are n no words are, are so strong that they're considered swear words. But when you translate them, they are uh, oh, like in English, they, they become that. Um, That's fascinating. And it, it, seems, it seems kind of, um, what's it called when, <laughs> when you forget words so often, um, it seems arbitrary mm -hmm. that in our culture we have these words that uh, you're not supposed to say mm -hmm. in certain settings. And uh, now it, it kind of makes sense because they're thematic. Like that's, that talks about something that we don't really talk about in this setting. Mm -hmm. But then you have professional settings where you have to talk about that thing. And yeah. so instead you call it excrement or stool you know right mm -hmm. um and it's just, it's just that we have this one word that used to be just the word for it mm -hmm. in old english or whatever it just used to be the word for it it wasn't mm -hmm. an ugly word it was just the word mm -hmm. um but now uh we have more polite words and you don't say that other word yeah, um, fascinating huh it, it is a little it is a little arbitrary so it's it's not like there's any um to take it back to, to like strip, strip the rules away down to bare Christianity. Mm -hmm. um, you're not neglecting the poor and you're not, um, right. you're not stealing. You're not um, lying when yeah. you drop a swear word, yeah. you know, like w what's the issue with it? Well, it's, it's cultural and it's, it's cultural. It's right. conveying yeah. who you are and how, how you communicate. Um, and we have the language that's been given to us and we are in the cultural backdrop that we are in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, so, that's so fascinating. Yeah. Especially I think as a writer thinking about our language like that is so powerful because when you're thinking of new worlds, you want to have that in mind. How do they treat their language? What, you know, do they even have swear words? Like you said about the Japanese culture, how there's not really words that are super taboo, like, like we have, right? Rather than approaching it as like, okay, what are the swear words in my world? Trying to think about it. Okay, why are those the swear words? And do they even have swear words? Like, that's so interesting. So yeah, loving this discussion. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't have anywhere else to go with the conversation right now. Uh, maybe I've forgotten something, but I I think it's been a really interesting conversation. Yeah, it's been fascinating. Um, so, why don't you tell us again where to find you, uh, where to find your books, where listeners can can find that and uh, read some clean fantasy? Yeah, I would love to. So my website is jessicaflory.com and that's F-L-O-R-Y. Um, you can get a free novella there that'll give you kind of a taste of my writing. And I'm super proud of this novella. It's called The God Heist. It kind of mixes um, Six of Crows with Mistborn. So if you like kind of heist fantasy, I think you'll really enjoy it with some pretty unique world building and a little bit of that um, sweet romance in there as well. Um, I'm also on Instagram and Facebook with the handle Jessica Flory Author, so you can find me there. My books are all on Amazon, uh, BarnesandNoble.com, and you can also there's links where to get them on my website JessicaFlory.com. So, 
Yeah, thank you so much, Don, for having me. I had a blast. This was such a fun discussion, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, and let's hang on a minute after we stop the recording. But uh, yeah, thank you for for coming on the podcast, and for our listeners, we'll catch you next time. Um, oh, and just for your information, Jessica, mm -hmm. I am slating this discussion for two weeks out. Is that okay. correct? Let me check my calendar. Um, so we're recording today on. March 14th. Happy Pi Day. Ooh, yeah. Um, and we are looking at the 28th. Yeah, two weeks out from yeah, today. Sounds good. Um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk after I stop the recording. Okay. We'll catch you next time on the Grand Hill Chronicles podcast.